So we're now going to create the first object on our screen, which is going to be the slider that will control our background. To do this, go to Insert, and under the Controls menu, choose the slider. In order to create the slider on the screen, you simply need to click and drag. So why exactly are we using a slider to control our background? Well, the best thing about the slider is that it is controlled by a numerical value which is stored as a variable within your project. If I go into my triggers window here and click on this button here to open my project variables, you will see that a slider numerical variable has already been created for me. So we need to make this slider a lot bigger now in order to have it completely fill our screen as well as some of the left and right hand side of our project, leaving enough room for our background image to scroll across. So if we click on the view tab and click on the zoom button, I'm just going to zoom out to 33% so I've got plenty of room to play with here. If you click on the slider itself and then click on the format tab at the top, you will see that you have numerical values for the width and height. So I'm going to resize my slider now so that it is roughly 4000 pixels across and about 600, maybe 700 pixels high. Great. So we want to ensure that the animation of our background scrolling across the stage is as smooth as possible. And as you can see, there are only a certain number of steps in our slider which would make our animation quite jumpy. So what we need to do is go under the design tab for the slider and here where we have the start and end step numbers, we just need to increase this. I'm going to change mine to 300. As you can see, if we move the slide and film across now, the animation is quite smooth. So we don't want to see the track at all because that will be covering up part of our stage. So we need to go back to the format tab and under the track fill and track border, we just need to click this drop down box, this drop down button and choose no fill and no outline. So the thumb needs to now become our background image, which we are going to take a look at in Photoshop. So here is my full background image, which I've created in Photoshop. As you can see, the image itself is very large. Right now we're zoomed out to 50%. If I zoom in to 100%, you can see that only a small portion of the background is going to be displayed at any one time in my game. And it will be this scrolling motion that will give the impression that the player is moving backwards and forwards around the level. As you can see, there are a number of objects that I've created within this room. The image itself, if we take a look at the size, is around 3000 pixels wide and about 800 pixels high. So if you remember, my storyline size setup is 800 by 600, which will mean that we'll have roughly four times additional width for the background to play with in order for it to scroll left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and export this image now as a PNG file in order to bring into my Storyline file. So let's now go back into Storyline. So if I click on my slider and then click the Format tab, under the Thumb Fill, if I choose this drop down button and choose Picture, I can select the background image that I just created in Photoshop. Once I click Open, that will now be added onto my project as the thumb slider. So now I just need to do a bit of adjustment in order to have the image fill the entire height of the stage. As you can see, the thumb image has a small yellow square above it, which is what we can use to increase and decrease the size. If I click and drag this upwards, you will see that it starts to increase in height. So I'm just going to increase it until the background has completely filled the top of the stage. So what I need to do now is make sure that the end boundaries of the background fit with the end boundaries of my stage. So if I move the slider all the way along so that it is currently at position 300 of 300, you can see that there is a gap 
right here. So what I need to do is just decrease the size of my slider ever so slightly from the right hand side until that position entirely lines up. Like so. And now I'm going to move the slider all the way along to the left. And exactly the same thing is happening here on this side of the level. So I just need to resize the slider from this side in order to have it fit snugly within my project. Perfect. So now, as you can see, if I move the background myself manually, going from one extreme to the other shows how the background will always stay within the confines of my project. So now that that's done, what I'm going to do is add a reference to the position of my slider on my screen that I'll be using for testing and design purposes, just so that I always know exactly what position on the screen the background is at. So to do this, I'm just going to quickly hide the slider so that I can see my background here. I'm just going to click the Fit to Window button under the View tab so that I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to insert a text box just in the top right hand corner of the project. And this is where I'm going to make a reference call to my slider variable. To do this, we just need to type the name of the variable, which is capital S slider1. And then we just need to put a percentage symbol at the start and at the end of, of that bit of text. And we'll just make it ever so slightly larger so that we can clearly see. Perfect. So let's bring the slider back in. And I might just need to quickly change the font color to maybe white so that it stands out on my project here. Great stuff. So if we quickly preview the project right now, you can see that my background appears, it fills the entire screen. And as I scroll the background from left to right, you can see that numerical value change in the top right hand corner there, which is going to be extremely useful for us as we come to develop our game. So the next thing that we're going to do is introduce our first bit of JavaScript code, which is what is going to control the movement of the background when we press and release a particular key on our keyboard. And we'll be doing that in the next video.